on this National Day of Prayer, let's us take a moment to extend our deepest sympathy to the families of those who have lost their loved ones to COVID-19. Let us pray for the ill, the ones who are suffering, and those serving on the front lines. When evil darkens our world, give us light. When despair numbs our souls, give us hope. When we stumble and fall, lift us up. When doubts assail us, give us faith. When nothing seems sure, give us trust. When ideals fade, give us vision. When we lose our way, be our guide. That we may find serenity in your presence and purpose in doing your will. Amen. Thank you very much, please. Thank you. Be seated, please. And Melania, thank you very much on the second anniversary of the Be Best initiative. You've done a fantastic job, and everybody appreciates it. But I want to thank you. And I want to thank you on behalf of the entire nation for all that you do for America's children and on fighting the drug addiction problem that we have in this country. It's all over the world, but I want to thank you very much. Great job you do. You work so hard. On this National Day of Prayer, America is engaged in a fierce battle against a very terrible disease. Throughout our history, in times of challenge, our people have always called upon the gift of faith, the blessing of belief, the power of prayer, and the eternal glory of God. I ask all Americans to join their voices and their hearts in spiritual union as we ask our Lord in Heaven for strength and solace, for courage and comfort, for hope and healing, for recovery, and for renewal. In recent days and weeks, our country has endured a grave hardship. We pray for every family stricken with grief and devastated with a tragic loss. We pray for the doctors, the nurses, and first responders waging war against the invisible enemy. We pray for the scientists and researchers, pioneer treatments, that they find therapies and vaccines, and that they find them soon. We pray for the frontline workers keeping our nation fed, nourished, and safe and secure. May God watch over them all. We are honored to have with us today our amazing Vice President, Mike Pence, and his wonderful wife, Carrot, great friends of our nation and great friends of mine and Melania's. And somebody's done an incredible job, not only as Vice President, but as heading the task force, which has come up with so many solutions and ideas and things that we didn't even think about two months ago. We're also profoundly grateful to be joined by many faith leaders who are helping to care for our neighbors in their hour of need. Thank you all for providing meals to families, medical supplies to hospitals, and for providing spiritual strength and encouragement to your communities. Very important people, very respected people, and very much loved people. In every part of our country, we've seen grace of God through the love and devotion of our fellow citizens. As Scripture assures us that the Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. We have been reminded once again that God has blessed our land with heroes of faith. What an honor to be here with you, President and First Lady, Vice President, Second Lady. It's a beautiful day to lift up our Lord and Savior. He is a certain God in uncertain times, and the Bible says if two or three of us agree as touching anything, it will be done. Job 22, verse 28 says, If you decree a thing and declare a thing, it will be established. So, God, we come in agreement with your word and with your name, the name of Jesus. Psalm 40, verse 17 says, You are my help and my deliverer. Do not delay, O God. I declare no more delays to the deliverance of COVID-19. 
No more delays to healing and a vaccination. No more delays to restoration of this great nation, the United States of America. For Psalm 71, 2 says, And your righteousness deliver us and rescue us. Incline your ear and save us. Psalm 107 says, You deliver us out of distress and out of destruction. Your word will not return void, according to Isaiah chapter 55, verse 11. So I declare your word. I declare divine intervention and supernatural turnaround. You will restore this land. According to Psalm 118, 25, Save our nation, O Lord, and send prosperity now. For Deuteronomy 28, 8 says, Command your blessing upon this land. You said in Deuteronomy 8, 9, To bring us into a good land without any lack for your word declares in psalm 33 2 blessed is the nation whose god is lord so i declare you right now to be lord over this nation over the united states of america and we receive your blessing over any plague over any economic distress you will stay the hand of the enemy according to 2 Samuel chapter 21, verse 16. When 70,000 men died by a plague, David cried out as he covered himself in prayer. And the Lord answered and said, it is enough. Stay now thine hand. Lord, let that be the cry today and let that be your answer. Lord, enough coronavirus, enough to death, enough to fear enough to poverty stay thine your hand we pray over president trump and first lady vice president and second lady and this administration i declare psalm 89 verse 21 let your hand establish president trump and let your arm strengthen him i declare psalm 98 1 that your right hand and your holy arm will give him victory we declare victory in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 58, 11 says, guide him continually. And you said in Psalm 78, 72, that you would guide him by the stillness of your hand. You declared in Psalm 43, that send out your light and truth and let him lead his household, his administration in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, we pray for your mercies for they are new every single day. And every morning your mercies are new. Your steadfast love never ceases. I declare new mercies for hospital workers, new mercies for doctors and nurses, moms and dads, pastors and clergies, CEOs and employers, for the president, vice president. God, your love is steadfast and it endures forever. So right now, wrap your arms of love around every person who is hurting, every person who is confused, scared, tired, weary, sick, lonely, let them know your love. Let them know that you will never leave them and you will never forsake them. And in conclusion, I declare Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19. I ask the Lord to do a new thing in our nation by giving waters in the wilderness and streams in the desert. Malachi 4, 2 says, Jesus, arise over the nation with healing in your wings. President, one last word, like David who had had victory after victory after victory after victory, would face his biggest battle. It was called Ziglag. And they would take his wives and his children and the city would be burned down. And he cried and he wept. And he began to pray out to God and God gave him a word. And through fasting and praying, I believe this is the word for you and for this nation. The Lord spoke to him and said, pursue and go after them and you shall without fail recover all. Sir, the word of the Lord, I believe for this nation and for this administration is you will recover all.